Good morning, everybody. Jim Fleisman, Dave Koken from Las Vegas, and I hope it's a happy Tuesday morning for everybody. They had a great weekend, Dave. A lot of good action in, in hoops and in football and some crazy stuff. And we watched the game last night. That was a, well, I can't call it a barn burner, but it was it was really nervous, nerve-wracking for people that had either side of it, the point, point spread-wise. I'll say, um... Yeah, it wasn't a, I had New Orleans, uh, and I went 2-1 and one in the NFL, and I went 2-1 and one in the Bulls, so, you know, I'm unhappy enough with the football. Uh, I did lose last night. I, think I can't call it a bad beat, because Carolina blew a couple of chances to kind of break this game wide open uh, with red zone turnovers. Uh, one was a terrible pass by Newt at the end of the half. The other was a fumble uh, when they were driving. So, but it was a weird, weird beat. Because, you know, the, the, uh, the Panthers get the two-point conversion, the, the pick two, if you will, on the two-point conversion, and then you've got the, uh, the fumble at the goal line by the Saints. So I think either way, which, whichever side you had last night, you got, you got lucky if you won. Um, and you got a little unlucky if you lost, but it's, not, it's, it's a weird beat, not a bad beat. <laughs> Well, I, I was fortunate I took the six and a half on the on the Panthers in the game, and I feel fortunate to win. It it, it appears to me like Cam Newton is hurt, or I mean, he definitely, I don't even know why he's out there. He doesn't look like he has a throwing motion at all that would be effective in the NFL. Well, I think they should shut him down. I, I, in fact, you know, look, if you want to take shots this weekend, um, well, it looks like the, the market already made a statement on the Packers-Jets game. They, they don't think Aaron Rodgers... The market is suggesting Aaron Rodgers isn't going to play. I have a feeling he will. Uh, Rodgers is kind of that type. But if you want to take shots, you could look at Carolina as the play against this week, even with the Falcons, because I think there's a good chance Newton won't play. I know there's nothing on the injury report, but there's really no reason to send him out there at this point, and he is... He's clearly hurt. His throwing motion is a mess right now, and that's that's related to the shoulder. Well, I'm not too sure it wouldn't be a a uh, an upgrade to put a backup in there because the way he's playing, and he has played for six weeks, it's been pretty awful. Um, you know, their their defense stood up in a big game last night, rivalry game, but um, you know, Atlanta comes in a lot healthier at quarterback and I mean even though they don't play very well on the road it doesn't I, I would say that the Panthers are not going to show up yeah. in, in the final think, two weeks of the season it's I been think a, you're right I, 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 I don't know I, I don't think Carolina's winning any more games I think they're going to end the season on uh, what'll be an eight game losing streak and as far as the Packers are concerned you know Aaron Rodgers has had I don't know what his issues are besides, you know, the coaching issues. And you got rid of McCarthy, and he was it's pissed. Bad, yeah, bad boy. Yeah, he he's been he's been he was pissed off before the season started because they got rid of some players that he didn't yeah. want to get rid of. So, you know, he's had a an awful season for him. Um, why he would want to go out there and play? Well, he's a football player. Maybe that's the reason. But yeah. I'm, and I'm, and I'm, look, you don't get to that level uh, unless you're a special kind of football player, which he obviously is. Uh, I mean, this guy, this guy wouldn't even sit out the second half of that Bears game in week two when he was he was on one leg. Uh, so, I, I mean, I if if they're playing and he's playing, I uh, they're still a danger. They're, they're not good. But there's still a team that's going to compete for 60 minutes. I don't. I don't think you're going to get any lay down from that team. Right. There are some interesting matchups. I mean, you got Kansas City and Seahawks. Is a. It's got some importance to it. Boy. You've got the Ravens playing at the Chargers. There's importance to that game. Huge. Yeah, and then you know now that. Um, you know Pittsburgh has got to keep trying. They've got to keep winning, especially if those Ravens keep after them. Um, and they're going down to New Orleans, who's become a more of a, a, a controlled offense than a downfield passing team. They run the ball. They played good defense. 
Uh, they're not quite as sharp as they were in the first six, seven weeks, eight weeks of the season. Yeah, a little bit of kudos there. Boy, they're not very trustworthy on the road. Uh, and, 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 you know, even Sunday, uh, Brady made some uncharacteristically, very uncharacteristically bad plays. Otherwise, I think the Patriots probably beat them. That holding penalty New England got when they were driving for the lead was an absolutely enormous play. Uh, the Patriots go in and score there, and they'd have won that football game. Uh, the, the fascinating dynamic to me, the most fascinating thing right now, is that the Chiefs could end up as a number five seed hmm. and on the road for the wild card game. If they lose this game, which they can do, I mean, this, is, this is a game they can lose at Seattle, and, uh, and the Chargers beat Baltimore, the Chargers might have, end up as the number one seed in the AFC. And the Chiefs may, may, may very well end up as the number five seed in the AFC, which means they probably end up having to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. And i got to tell you, maybe Reed on the road in a playoff game, if they, happen to, if they have to go on the road in the first, you know, first game, I think they, they might very well get beat. You know, Dave, we don't talk about it much, or I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, but Kareem Hunt was a very explosive player for them. And losing him, yeah, you can put other running backs in there, but he brought a different dimension to them, and they haven't looked the same since he's been gone. Well, and the fact is, their defense stinks. And, you know, it might be a game that's predicated more on offense now, but as we're getting later into the season, you're, seeing, you're not seeing the 40 to the 35 games. You're seeing defense become more important. And... Playoffs, that could be something that happens on a regular basis. And if it comes down to defense, this Chiefs team is not going to beat a lot of teams. Their defense is terrible. Yeah, it is. You know, we talk about they're playing Seattle this week. And this is an interesting situation. The Seattle's passing defense, which is you're going to see a lot of pressure on their passing defense this week with Mahomes out there, of course. But against San Francisco with Nick Mullins, who's an undrafted free agent that he looks like a keeper for the NFL. He passed in two games for 675 yards against Seattle. That's, uh, that's quite remarkable for a team like San Francisco, who, who's had a lot of injuries and players are missing. and But... You know, that's a lot of yardage to give up to a... Oh, it, is. it is, but the thing is, and I, I, I'll just say it again, I mean, they can't stop anybody in Kansas City. And, that, you know, and you go on the road, it's that, that place, which is crazy. And I, I'm not putting a whole lot into the San Francisco game. It was a dead spot for the Seahawks. I'm not really that surprised they got beat, to tell you the truth. I didn't play the game, but, but I was looking at San Francisco. Um... They, they're going to be ready. That was a big sandwich spot because they, they had this game coming up. It's a national TV standalone game. I I won't be going against Seattle at this spot. I know that. I don't I don't think I'll play the game. Uh, but I would be leaning Seattle's way. I, to me, I think Kansas City's a team that right now could be heading in the wrong direction. We talk about teams that have peaked already. They might be one of them. Well. Uh, yeah, I, I think you you do see teams out there that have peaked too early. The Rams, the Saints, Kansas City. A lot of the, those three teams do look like they peaked about three, four weeks ago. Um, but shocking to me in this game, we don't expect to see a lot of defense on the Kansas City side. Kansas City is actually favored in Seattle. Well, they should be. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. No, as far as, as far as I'm not talking about a true line in the game. I'm talking about from a from a uh, putting up a, a betting line perspective. They have to be favorite because if you put this game at pick, they'd have they'd have so much of the liability on that game that pick. I mean, books don't they don't want that kind of liability. Well, I'd make a prediction. I'm I'm going to make a prediction right now. Just, just for the people out there, they want to take what, do with whatever they want to do with this. I'm going to say Seattle ends up the favorite in this game before it kicks off. 
And when you look at the road home dynamics, when you look at this, basically, he's not a rookie quarterback, but he's a first-year starter in Mahomes. You're looking at the way they played their last three or four weeks, um, especially since Kareem Hunt is gone, and you look at how bad their defense is, and you look at the capability of their running games. I mean, who's the better running team? Who's the more experienced quarterback? Who has the home field advantage? Who plays better at home versus who plays worse on the road? Um, there's no dynamic here at all that tells me Kansas City sh should be the favorite in the game. No, I, and again, I, I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of what the right line of the game is, uh, in terms of how it plays out. But from, a, from the odds makers' perspective, they have to make Kansas City a favorite in the game. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they get completely overwhelmed. Uh, on, on, they, they're going to, the public's going to bet the Chiefs anyway. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to put up a line that, that, that's going to, they, they've got enough games, so they're going to have a, a liability this weekend. They're going to have a liability, I would say, with the Patriots. Um, I think they're probably going to have a liability with the Eagles. I think people are going to buy, I think the better market is going to buy the Eagles this weekend. They're going to buy the Vikings. They already are. Um, probably buy the Browns. Uh, and the game, to me, the most fascinating game from what, what and the public is certainly by the Bears, um, I think the most fascinating game from a betting perspective is going to be the Ravens Chargers game. I, I don't, and I won't have a play in the game. I, I already know that. That's the first game I worked on. And my number is five on the game, so I won't, I won't have a bet on that game. But that's, that's going to be a real heavy volume game. Uh, and, uh, I don't know where, where the market's going to go on that one. Because I think there'll be a lot of support for Ravens, whose defense is playing really tough. And at the same time, the Chargers have tremendous incentives. They've got as much incentive as the Ravens at this point. That's all true. The problem with the game is, if anybody has followed the Chargers in this pillbox that they play in, they really don't have a home field advantage to speak of. Um... It's a small stadium. Most of the, a lot of times the opposing team has more fans in the stadium than they do. Oh, listen, the Ravens fans will travel for this game. There's going to be a lot of Baltimore fans in this game. Um, the Chargers right now, honestly, and they may not show up in this game, but the Chargers right now may be the best AFC team out there. I now have them as my highest power rated team in the AFC. In fact, I think I've got them. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got the Saints still as my uh, top power rated team. I believe I've got the Chargers number two. I don't have my numbers in front of me. Actually, I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do I have as the. Let's see, little, little five, little seven, let's see. I've got. Uh, well, I've still, actually, I've still got the, the Chiefs as uh, my highest power rated AFC team. By a little bit, uh, but I've, I've got the I've got the Saints uh, still as my clear favorite, clear favorite, and, and they've never lost a home playoff game by the way since Drew Brees got there. So I think the Saints are going to be in the Super Bowl. Now after that, I don't know. <laughs> well, I I bet early before the season started, I bet the Saints to to get in the Super Bowl and win it. So um, you, you've got a nice. You got a nice value on that one because they're still the best team out there. And by the way, their defense is getting better. Their defense uh, is definitely better, and they 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 also run the ball pretty well. And you know they're not going to be they're not going to be intimidated by the big high pressure game because they've been there before. No, and you can't beat them at home. I mean, you know, they're just a, a monster at home. Can you imagine the Super Bowl Chargers against the Saints? Two quarterbacks that are about 38, 39 years old. That's going to be really something. <laughs> it certainly would. But um, it, it, anything going on in, um, in basketball that's um, exciting you right now? I and mean, we're going to start with the, the, well, the conference game soon. Kind of moving along in college basketball, uh, it hasn't really been that good. The Hawks have been tremendous for me. Absolutely 
movie. So I lost last night, but uh, I think it's 17 and 5 in the last 22. Wow. And uh, it's been great. So, you know, my college basketball hasn't gotten there yet. Uh, and, uh, and that's just the way it is. Uh, my, once my numbers kick in, uh, I'll get rolling, but they, but they just haven't so far. And I'm, I'm kind of biding my time and waiting for conference play now. Well, yeah, the con definitely uh, conference play is what I look forward to because you get a lot more consistency with the lineups that the coaches use. Right now, in what they call like almost preseason basketball, they do a lot of experimenting. Yeah, and Whatever they're doing, uh, I have not gotten going to college basketball. I'm not going to tell people I'm hot when I'm not. So you know, Everything else is going great. Football has been tremendous. like the bowl games this week. I'm going to be adding another bowl play. Actually, I've set it out to my clients already, but I'll be posting it uh, at the site today. Uh, that will be on uh, one of the polls that's going this week. And uh, off to a good start. So try and keep it going, right, Tim? Absolutely. We keep grinding away, Dave. And uh, I want to thank you for your time today. Everybody out there, go to jimfeist.com for Dave's plays and mine. And uh, check back here each and every day for our podcast. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. All right, Tim. i got to roll to the next one.